just three miles east of Lindrinard Wells, is the dramatic ridge of Castle Bank. It lies within a loop of the River Ithan, which surrounds it on three sides. On top of this ridge, there are the remains of two medieval castles, a legacy of the turbulent years during the Middle Ages as the English crown sought to extend its rule over Wales. The top of this ridge is more or less flat and may once have been an Iron Age hill fort. It is a complex site which is difficult to understand from ground level. This short video uses a drone to provide aerial views. Hundreds of drone photographs have been combined to generate a three-dimensional digital model which can be manipulated to provide detailed visualizations of this spectacular site. Rotating the model shows the main features. A castle at either end, both originally made of stone, with areas of ploughing, field boundaries and many platforms where once stood huts or buildings. A bank, which may have prehistoric origins, surrounds the hilltop. The steep sides of the site make it a formidable defensive location. Deliberate destruction quarrying the castles for their stone and the passage of centuries have reduced the castles to grass-covered heaps of rubble. This, the northernmost castle, was constructed under the supervision of the 11-year-old Roger Mortimer, son of the English Macho Lord, Ralph Mortimer. Work began on its construction around 1242 and may have been the refurbishment of an earlier Welsh castle the castle has commanding views over the surrounding countryside, over which it would have presented the dominating message, don't mess with me. The rather shambling remains today give the impression of a castle which just grew, rather than being the completion of a single master plan. Because of the depredations it has suffered, details of the castle's structure remain uncertain. However, photogrammetry clearly shows the main features. The red line marks what may have been the prehistoric bank of the hillfort, doubtless reused and enhanced by the castle builders. A castle keep sits on the highest point and appears to be fortified by a square wall with corner towers within which there is a central tower. The bailey lies to the north of the keep was this the plan of an earlier Welsh Motton Bailey Castle, or was it perhaps the first stage of Mortimer's construction? An existing ditch marks what may once have been a more substantial moat. Protecting the castle to the south is an impressive curtain wall. The steep eastern side of the hill provides protection in that direction. A broad zigzagging path provides access to the bailey. The possible remains of a gatehouse still exists just inside the bailey. More controversially, the remains of an inner curtain wall can be seen. These inner piles rise higher than the outer curtain wall, as can be seen from a side view. From the west, the successive lines of defence can be seen. The outer curtain wall the possible inner curtain wall, what may be termed the citadel, and finally the keep. The possible inner curtain wall is on a line with the bailey to which it once may have joined. These features and many others can be appreciated more fully as the digital model rotates. In 1262, some 20 years after the start of its construction, these formidable defences were rendered useless when local Welshmen rebelled against their marcher lord and captured it from the inside. The Welsh began to demolish it. It was almost immediately retaken by Mortimer with the help of other marcher lords who briefly camped within the ruins before it was again taken by Llewellyn ap Griffith. It is assumed that Llewellyn completed the destruction of this potent symbol of Mortimer power and influence.
However, in the Treaty of Montgomery some five years later, Mortimer was granted permission to rebuild the castle, whilst Llewellyn was promised that there would be an adjudication on whether the castle and land rightfully belonged to him. Rather than rebuild or repair this castle, Roger Mortimer, against the protestations of Llewellyn, used the opportunity to build a new castle from scratch at the other end of the ridge. Further, the promised adjudication never happened, causing further complaints from Llewellyn. The simple design of the new castle is striking. A deep, rock-cut ditch provided a source of material and protection for a square-shaped castle with corner towers. Within this was the circular, or at least multi-sided, keep. Beyond this was the bailey overlooking the very steep slopes down to the meadows and the river Ithan. This simple design is very different to the rambling first castle. Like that castle, it stood as a dramatic symbol of power over the surrounding countryside. The castle subsequently remained in the ownership of the Mortimer family for a further 160 years, passing to a descendant who became Edward IV, thus taking Kevin Cleese into the ownership of the crown. The emphasis slowly changed from its military function to that of a symbol of authority and jurisdiction over the surrounding lands. In 1356-7, records list the cost of upkeep of the castle. They include fixing the roof of the great keep and the steps leading to the hall, as well as repairing the thatch on a barn. It was still garrisoned in 1402-3, at the time of the Glendower uprising. The age of castles came to an end. By the early 16th century, Kevinclees was described as now down, and in 1687 it was the ruins of an old castle. The area between the castles has many interesting features. The gateway to this area is guarded by the banks of a bastion similar in form and scale to the castles and is probably contemporary with them. Immediately inside the gateway are a number of rectangular platforms and banks defining small fields. The date and function of these is a matter of conjecture. It is possible that horses and stables occupied this area during the age of the castles. It is also possible that the fields once held cattle or sheep with barns on the platforms long after the castles ceased to be occupied. When the bracken is down, earthen banks, boundaries of abandoned fields, become visible on the slopes below the castle. Some of these banks extend onto the flat top of the castle ridge. As well as areas of irregular quarrying, the very steep eastern slope also shows banks of deserted fields. The question as to what may have grown on such steep slopes remains open. It is possible, though unproven, that vines may have grown here during the period of more benign climate that lasted to around 1300. Castle Bank is dramatic. In the Middle Ages, its location in a border region overlooking critical access routes that was fought over by Welsh rulers and English barons made it a strategic base for power. Its role as a military base on a disputed frontier may have lasted only some 50 to 60 years, but the marks of what was built then are still clearly visible. 